Joe, I know you said you uh, tried to stay quiet during the lead up to this fight, not do a lot of talking, but obviously all the interviews and all the cameras are, are getting in front of your face because it's fight week. Is it harder to bite your tongue at this point, or is it still easy to, to stay quiet at this moment? Nah, I think it's always hard to bite my tongue. I don't like uh, I don't like holding what I have to say and how I feel, you know what I mean? Um, but I can't really say I'm feeling – if you poke the right subject, I'll probably open up. But, yeah, no, nah, I mean – I'm just ready to get through this media, finish my cut, look this dude in the face, and punch him in the fucking mouth. So, I know you said in the build-up to this one, uh, sleep and diet were kind of the biggest changes that you made in Justice. Why were those the things you identified that needed to be fixed? Yeah, I mean, to be just 100% honest, I, I did not have enough carbs in my diet, so I was always in a deficit, and I was pushing 22 to 2,400 calories uh, a day in camp with, with training. Like that's, that's what I'm sweating, and... Uh, you know, not including like what I'm sleeping off. So uh, I was probably in the 100 to 150 and I would eat that after training. So it was just a uh, lack of knowledge of understanding what to eat, when to eat, not having a nutritionist. Um, and then so I really got to work with uh, the UFC's people, uh, with Glenn. And uh, yeah, they've really narrowed down a, a good diet plan for me. I've always eaten clean. That's never been the problem. But uh, they really they really narrowed down my uh, my diet for me and what to eat, when to eat. Uh, and have a good schedule for me. And then obviously my sleep, I, bro, I'm a high anxiety guy when it comes, I, maybe it's not anxiety, but it's, I'm always looking to, to do something, you know what I mean? So I'm a busy body. Have you felt a difference? I mean, is one camp enough to feel the, the difference that those adjustments that you made make? Oh, for sure. Mentally, like me even being present right now, like wanting to be here and, you know, obviously uh, I think it, it played a huge part. I think I warped my mind a little bit, blew, blew uh, like burnt myself out. Um, so yeah, but now, you know, I'm good. I feel good now and I, and I want to be here and I'm excited and uh, I've always wanted to be here, um, but it makes it a little bit easier each time. So I definitely felt a difference and definitely felt like I could get through the practices much better than, uh, than previous. And, and the best way to explain it is like, I would show up some days and just be in survival mode. Like let's get through this practice because I was so depleted uh, versus like, let's dig this practice and try to push and, and really blow our lungs out. Yes. Last thing for me, you know, we always just talk about the target that you had placed on your back from the very beginning, right? So you get this win on Saturday, you start the win streak again. Are you hoping that that same attention, that same energy is around you, or are you hoping to do things a little bit different in this run? Johnny Boy, the, the, all I got to do is knock this motherfucker out, whoop his ass, dominate, do what I do best, and I'm going to be right back where I am. I'm 27 years old, all these turds talking shit on social media, all these shitty fans, it's all good. It's all, they're not real fans. They don't know their homework, bro. I'm 27 years old. I got 15 pro fights. I'll go out there. I'll do my thing. I'm not going to change who I am. I'm still going to talk shit. I'm still going to be a jerk off. And, uh, yeah, that's how it is. So you don't like me, don't fucking ask me a question. You know what I mean? Like, don't, don't follow me. That, that, it's the weirdest fucking – it's like the weirdest click ever dealing with uh, the – downside of a loss like you know I put my body on my on the line my health and all these things I go out I fight a, a a guy everybody's acting like I got knocked out or I got choked out or something it's like bro I lost a decision and I lost by one round and in the third round got hit in the eyeball couldn't see the guy for the rest of the fight you know what I mean so it's just people's like delusion it's like I lost by that much and I he's got 17 UFC fights that was my fifth one and I'm out there performing at that on my fifth fight so yeah, no. I'll be right back where I belong. Trust me. Joe, over here. Uh, kind of to go off of that, uh, making the changes you did in camp, even before that, you were finding a lot of success in the UFC, but now that you know, you've know you changed the diet and the sleep and everything and you're no longer depleted, how good do you think we, like, we'll see you perform now that you have uh, all of this? I don't know. That's why I'm fighting. Um, you know, I want, I want to find out how far I can take this, right? So uh, I have the speculation that I fix things just based on how I feel. But we don't really know, bro, until, you know, the fight's going and we're exchanging. And we'll see how I feel. Um, I think people are being a little bit dramatic with how bad my cardio is. Look, <laughs> I made it through two sessions of five five-minute rounds my last camp for Jack. And it's not why I lost. The man had a better game plan. He stuck to it, right? But I was sick from December 22nd till January 21st with one of the worst. I have no idea what I had. I was coughing up phlegm, coughing up blood. Brendan Allen came up to help me and everything, and I was dead sick. I was dead sick even on the Joe Rogan podcast on January 17th, and then I still fought, what was it, February 10th? So, bro, I had like two and a half weeks where I wasn't dead sick. My coaches wanted to pull me and everything, and uh, I, I – 
I didn't bother me. I still was like, man, I think I can beat this guy. Like, I believe it. I can knock him out. I can do this. I can do that. And uh, we took the chance. So um, even in the loss, I'm still getting attention and I'm still learning. You know what I mean? So ain't nothing changed over here, bro. The only thing that changed was the social media world. But nothing's changed in my heart. Nothing's changed in my mind. Is, is the social media part what you were referring to that you have to bite your tongue about? Yeah, 100%, bro. We live in a woke fucking world, a bunch of little weak bitches. So I just, uh, I, don't, I don't have much respect for a lot of people that have to bite their tongue because it's the social norm. Social norms doesn't make it right. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of shit that I don't fuck with. Looking at this fight specifically, you know, Mark Andre is pretty well known to being a very durable guy. Like, usually when you get in there, it's three, three hard, hard rounds, five rounds. You're obviously famous. You got... He's fought five rounds? Not five rounds. I was going to say, like, you, you fought five rounds. He's done a lot of three hard round fights. Um, you, you obviously kind of blew up on the internet when you broke Francis's punch record. So when you have a guy like yourself who hits harder than almost anyone in this division against a very durable guy like Marc Andre, what kind of fight are you expecting? In I think his durability is blown up. Uh, I think he's got a lot of heart. I think he is durable, yes. But I don't think that it's it's a, I don't think it's like a staple that you guys should be putting on. I'm not you saying you guys, but like just people in general, like the narrative, he's a durable guy. Look, are you talking about his skills? Are you talking about his punching power? Like, cool, he fights boring fucking decisions. Chris Curtis' fight was terrible. Um, and it wasn't Chris Curtis's fault. Like, Chris was doing his thing. It's just, I feel like styles make matches, right? I think he's a good dude. I think he's a tough guy. I've heard that he's a nice guy. He's a good guy. Um, you know, but we're going to fight. And, uh... Yeah, I don't care how fucking durable you think your chin is, bud. When I crack you, if I get a clean one, I will hurt you. Um, look at Jack. I didn't hurt him, but he still said I was one of the hardest people to hit him. So it's just I need to get a clean one, man. I, I was doing good that fight, throwing combinations, and then, you know, Mark's a totally different fighter. Um, he's a veteran. He's, I think he's been in this you know, the game for a while, and I got respect for him. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not his friend, but I got respect for him, and I think he's tough. So that's, that's all I can say. I don't think he is – got a set of skills that I'm going to be like, oh, my God, I can't deal with this. He's going to try and push forward. He's going to try to make it ugly. He's going to want to clinch. He's going to want to throw uppercuts. He's going to want to throw uh, shitty knees and, and some elbows. And he's going to be tough. He could beat me that way, right? He could if I let him dictate that. But uh, he's also a guy that's willing to exchange with me, and I'm going to catch him inside there. That's what I do. I do great when people get aggressive. So if you look at how Jack fought me, he hit, ran, hit, ran, hit, ran. So And then he took me down. <laughs> And final one for me. Can I just get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Yuri? Bunch of fucking voodoo shit going on. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm bummed out. I wish it was Connor. Uh, I like Yuri. I like Alex. I think I think Alex is just becoming, you know, huge in the sport. Um, it's his presence. It's the way he carries himself. He's not uh, he's not so socially open. You know what I mean? We'll walk by each other. I think we, me and Alex, have walked by each other like 10 times. We've never said hello. I say hello to his coach, but we don't say hello to each other. There's just like, you know what I mean? That, that's, a good, that's a good way to carry yourself. I like that. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a good, uh, good main event. I, was, I, pull, I picked Yuri, Jiri to win the last one. Uh, I thought he was winning it, and then obviously he got, he got finished. So Alex has got that kind of power too. And Alex broke the record that I beat, by the way. Um, and, but I want to hit it again. Hopefully with Alex there one day, because uh, when I hit it, I had a torn shoulder and I shouldn't have hit it. So, and I also had a big glove. Give me a little glove. <laughs> Joe, just right here. Just curious who you think has the nicer white bucket hat between you and our friend here in the front row. Well, since this is my sponsor, I'm gonna have to go with me. What brand is that? Yeah, I'm gonna go with me. <laughs> hey, I, I look better with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just a quick one over here. Yeah, just here. Hello. Um, just because it's your your weight class, um, what are you? What's your opinion on the title fight coming up between Israel Adesanya and Drikas Duplessis? How do you think that goes down? Uh, yeah, that's interesting. That's that's a rivalry, right? Like after all the bad like bad things said between each other, it's actually not that bad. But it's you know that's the narrative that's going to be built. Um, yeah, I don't know. I hope Izzy gets it done. Uh, I've been watching Izzy for a long time. Drisk, you know, Drakus, I haven't watched as much, but he's tough. You know, I, two guys that don't like each other is always a good fight. And uh, I don't think Izzy's going to change much, right? He's going he's gonna to stick to what he's good at doing, and that's, that's picking people apart. So um, I don't really know who's going to win that. You also have to throw in the wild card of, like, Drakus. He can wrestle um, and make it ugly and make it, like, a crazy panic. So uh, that's tough, man. I don't know. 
Uh, I would have to go with the, the veteran since I got my ass whooped by one. I'll have to go with Izzy. <laughs> Thank you. Joe, over here. Um, you mentioned Brendan Allen and training with him your last camp. Obviously, he's a teammate of Marc-Andre Barrio. I'm guessing you two didn't train for this camp? Nah, we didn't train this camp. Um, and, yeah, I know that they trained at the same gym. I don't really know how much they work to, with each other. You know, I don't give a shit. Brenda could tell him everything he wants. It's still not going to change the result. Uh, and I don't think that they're boys like that. I think they're they're cool. Um, and they do a good job, man. Like, they're, they're not intervening. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't even think it's a factor. Brendan helps me. I'm cool with him. I'm cool with Tuco. Um, and, uh, yeah, Mark doesn't really speak good fucking English, so. <laughs> Well, he's not. I don't even know if he's going to understand half of it. that a little bit. He, he has an accent, but he speaks perfectly fine English, I think. Does he? Yeah, he does, yeah. I can't understand him. Okay. Well, anyways, I'm Canadian, so un understandable. Well, USA, baby. Yeah, hate to let I, you I down, brother. I understand. Um, and, and just sort of uh, on, on that line of questioning as well, um, what, what does it say about your gym? A lot of fighters come to your gym and train with you guys, and I know there's like a standard and there's a work ethic. Um, how cool is that for you just as someone who's been there for, you know, for a long time and to see a lot of fighters come through and want to help you guys out? Yeah, man, everybody that's in the UFC, you know, besides me and Andre Petrosky, uh, we came like three years ago, almost, almost four years ago now, uh, to Team Marquez and, and Webb. And, uh, you know, Sean's homegrown from the UFC. Jeremiah Wells is homegrown. Pat Sabatini's homegrown. So it's cool. We got five of us. Uh, and then we got Nurse Sultan who joined too. Um, and, you know, so we're all, we're all building a team, and that's what we want, right? We want that camaraderie. Like, you got all these, these big-name gyms, and there's not a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention in those gyms. But, you know, we get a lot of one-on-one -on -one looks. We got a lot of good coaches that give us individual time. And, uh, yeah, I'm proud to be a part of it, man. And these guys are selfless. Like, they lose money coming out here most of the time because we're not, you know, champions making crazy money yet. But, uh, you know, time, time. It's, it's cool to be a part of it and have people that actually love you and care about you as coaches. So uh, can't ask for a better team, brother.